Hey, Ricky, you know what's awesome? What's that, Billy? Savage Steve Holland. Without a doubt. Ah. <laughs> you know what's awesome where we talk about all of the things that are awesome <laughs> it is uh i don't know what day it is we're still in quarantine as we're recording this hopefully <laughs> hopefully um by the time you hear this episode i will have been able to get a haircut because <laughs> you get cause, God. <laughs> yeah, you get a little shaggy there <laughs> dude it's starting to, I'm, I'm like seriously like i've got a clippers but that's just it's got nothing on this like I've, i was blessed with a with a mane of uh, flowing locks, Fabio got nothing on me, but uh, <laughs> but yeah. So we're here to talk about things that are awesome. How you been, man? Good, man. Uh, like you said, just kind of dealing with the stuff and uh, you know the, the the my little band project. Some guys that I play with in a band have been doing the quarantine music thing, and uh, you know that's that's going pretty well. Uh, getting requests now, so <laughs> that's pretty wild. I saw that. that- Dude, that, well, first of all, you guys got recognized by Kiss, which was pretty dang cool. Yeah, um, we're, we're pretty psyched uh, psyched about that. <laughs> and and um, because you showed me, I think some early tracks, or it was just like just like maybe five ten seconds of you and the guitar player. There was no bass, there was no vocals. It was just kind of a, a drum right. and guitar overlay. And I was like, I was like, okay, that sounds cool. And then you guys hit it with that with that release. I was like, oh my god, that is that is really killer. And, um, yeah, I actually started playing the guitar myself again. So <laughs> that's, that's my, uh, yes. Les Paul standard Yeah, that, uh, broke, broke it out. I mean, it's always in here somewhere. So, but, uh, so, Hey, what, what about this? What about, uh, what if, what if we do a little, uh, you know, what's awesome jam sometime and throw a tune out there and put it on our YouTube channel and make it exclusive. We can do it. <laughs> We can do it. That that would be pretty awesome, actually. Heck yeah! So, folks, if, if, a... if you're listening, hey, if you've got an idea of a song that you want us to to murder, <laughs> <laughs> uh, throw some some requests out there. We'll we'll see what what this leads to. We can we can throw a little something together. Well, hey man, I was in a band for the longest time, right? Like, yeah. Um, we played. We we well we practice at least one. We practice once a week. We played at least once, sometimes twice a week for five or six years. And then whenever I left the band, I, uh, I obviously didn't play as off as, uh, often as before. And then after the kids and the job and the podcasting and everything, I just kind of didn't play hardly at all mm. ever. Just at the end of the day, when it's like, what do you want to do? And like, oh, I want to play guitar, but I got like 10 things I need to do before I get to it. And then I'll fall asleep. Right. And start the next day. But here with the quarantine, I started playing again, and and uh, like just, I mean, not for any reason, just did sitting there, and I'm doing it, and it's fun. Um, then all these bands and stuff started doing the whole, the work, the, the, the play from home thing. I was like, that would be sweet. That would that would be a fun thing to do. Sure. So, uh, um, yeah, if you throw out a request, probably give me three or four days to to, to learn it solid. And yeah, you know, I'm only I, I'm a, the Dire Straits guy. I'm strictly rhythm, man. I don't do leads, but uh, that's all right. We can, I can we can come up with something though, and and you know <laughs> we'll we'll find something some common ground to kick it off, and then we'll see if we get any request out of that. They may, they may say, you know, our request is no more songs. <laughs> that's that's very possible, and th- and then all we do is just play the songs they don't want to hear. There you go. <laughs> Well, we're going to do something a little bit different to our longtime listeners. Um, we, uh, not to your, li- not to our listeners, but for the <laughs> listeners that have been around the whole time, <laughs> we're, we're, we're changing formats just slightly. Um, this, this is kind of has grown a little bit faster than we thought. We needed to come up with some, some way to keep our thoughts organized. So, what we are about to do has never been done in the history of radio. We're going to take a break for station identification and a word from a sponsor. (laughs) Does it ever feel like everyone's got more going than you do? Oops. (laughs) That everyone is smart. So you're Al Myers, kid. Yes, I am. 
You look pretty stupid to me. Thank you. You say the best skier in town just ran off with your girlfriend? Even your younger brother does better than you do? <laughs> and that nobody even cares? That broke up with me. Oh, that's nice. Well, you might be right. But remember one thing. I haven't even been to New York City. Nobody was ever better off dead. The truth is, I can outski you any day of the week. Oh, really? Yeah, you want a race? I'll take you on any day, sucker. Go that way, really fast. If something gets in your way, turn. All you need is guts. All right! Now turn! I'm gonna race, I'm gonna lose, and I'm gonna die in that order. Go! And you'll never doubt yourself again. He's skiing on one ski! Better off dead. And that's a real shame when folks be throwing away a perfectly good white boy like that. An abnormal look at a normal teenager. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and we are back. <laughs> just like that. Uh, and just like that. It's as if we were never even gone at all. Right. Um, my dad would tell me that back when he was a DJ, back before digital, whenever he was actually spinning records, he was a disc jockey. That there were certain songs, like most most songs on, on a on a playlist would be three minutes long, and then whenever it started getting into the '70s and these like six, seven, eight minute long songs, he's like, those were like a godsend because you could go to, to the restroom, have a smoke, <laughs> and like get get out of the out of the booth for a few minutes. Like, hey, Jude was an awesome song. Cause... Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Living minutes later, right? <laughs> exactly. Mm. But, but yeah. So had the the great pleasure of watching back to back. I mean, night night to night. The uh, I don't know why he never did more stuff because the two movies are awesome. But if you read the reviews, we're like, oh my god, they, he got kind of kind of kind of canned. Yeah. But uh, the 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 two eighties classics, Better Off Dead and One Crazy Summer. Yeah. 19, what, 84 and 85 or 85 and 86, something yeah. like that. It was just like, like, boom, boom. Right. <laughs> and uh, these movies were on such infinite repeat yeah. on basic cable when when I was little that it was, like, you basically had both movies memorized. And I remember thinking they were they were the, kind of the same movie. It was just one with the winter and one with the summer. That's pretty much right. Um, yeah. It, I mean, just like, well, kind of like, like a sequel to each other, like yeah. a chapter book. Like, yeah. here's, the, here's the winter version, here's the summer version. Um, both of them have John Cusack in it. So <laughs> both of them have Curtis Armstrong. They, they both have the, 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 the artist drawings, you know, when he's, when he's mm -hmm. doing the, the, the caricatures and, and it's animated and all that stuff, all that's in both movies. Uh, there's no doubt there's a stamp of this guy's movie style in both of these. And yeah, like you said, it's a shame that more didn't come out of, out of Steve, but I think it's because of, I heard that, it was very grueling for him. I think nobody got his humor at the time. I mean, the, I think the teens did, but I think the mm -hmm. movie world in, as a whole just didn't really grasp onto it. And lo and behold, they're, they're cult classics to our age group for sure. Well, two, I mean, well, a couple of things. Well, first of all, the first Hail Ming I heard was when y'all were talking about One Crazy Summer, <laughs> yeah, which is a, which is awesome because of your, the, the Hail Ming, format it immediately made me want to go watch that movie yeah because that was a gem from my childhood i was on all the time but i also remember my dad saying when it was on like who would have greenlit this movie right like he enjoyed it yeah. like he would sit there and watch it with me and he'd laugh he got the jokes he liked the humor that was right up his alley he was that kind of like weird sarcastic sort of uh dry sleight of hand sort of humor was, was his his personality but he'd sit there and just look at it and be like who would yeah. actually yeah sign on to like pay for this movie to be made yeah and of course i didn't understand that like back then but it's right because his, his the, both of those movies are so bizarre yeah <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just this side of the Zucker Brothers type humor where it's the slapstick kind of thing. 
It's a lot mm-hmm. more dry, kind of like what you were saying. It, it's really just its own thing. It, it's almost like, look at the explosion Napoleon Dynamite had. And based mm-hmm. off your age, you either found it really funny or you didn't find it funny at all. This is right. this is kind of that for our generation. That That's really what these movies were. Because, yeah, they were cornball. Yeah, they were stereotyped. But I think it was just turning everything on its on its ear and just giving you a, a different look at everything. And, and uh, yeah, man, I, I, opening night, me and, me and my wife, girlfriend at the time, went to see <laughs> One Crazy Summer in the theater when it came out. And my life was changed. I mean, I just I absolutely <laughs> fell in love with the movie because you look at the characters that are in it because it was, it was hand picking, you know, people of that time period that you say, you know, it'd be a good combination. Let's take that crazy screaming guy from police Academy, mm-hmm. put him with booger from revenge of the nerds. And as a bad guy, let's get the bad guy that's in all the, Twisted Sister video. So, I mean, they knew exactly <laughs> what they were doing when they were putting this together, you know. Uh, Demi think, Moore think, was, was the nobody at the time, you know. Right. Well, and that was one of those things, because I, I, like, I, I mentioned it when we were talking about uh, Meatballs, how these movies both, both of them were, were like, hanging out with an old friend. Yep. Um, the, I mean... It, it was weird because Nantucket is actually a pretty nice resort, but when Crazy Summer just did, it, it's kind of gritty, kind of like their their lives are just kind of in in that that kind of um, <laughs> lower class sort of world. They that 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 you know it, from their perspective everything's kind of dirty, and then there's the the rich people where everything's clean and bright and and polished. Right, but but um. The uh, the different scenes, the montages, the uh, I mean, again, like both movies, and I want I kind of want to start with uh, Better Off Dead because that was that was the first one, mm-hmm. um, where it's it's and, and they're both kind of set the same way. You got the kind of lovable loser who's kind of down on his luck, and he's just trying to trying to find his way, and um, you kind of get you, know, you, Ke- you kind of get the fast John time Ke- from Ridgemont High kind of thing where he's trying to find a job but he really doesn't want to work anywhere and and mm-hmm. you know so you're dealing with that whole scenario. I mean it, it's 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 hitting all those those high points that you had to have in a '80s teen movie. It, it, precisely. Yeah. And and he's like you you can tell that he's got this this kind of well it's John Cusack because of the the way that he is his his yeah just demeanor the, the actor. Yep has this kind of uh, undercurrent of angst and wisdom both kind of playing, even at that young age. Right. You know, that's why he became who he was. That's why he he shot stardom. Yeah. But um, but you feel for him because he's, he's you. It, you're, <laughs> even when I look at... Yeah, and, uh, 100%. You know, he, I mean, he's, he's, he's the, the average Joe who's in love with the girl that's too good for him, really, to mm-hmm. an extent. But is she really? In his mind, she yeah. is. And then you're facing off against the jock, right? The prep. I mean, it's it's that '80s formula that we all just kind of cling to, but it's <laughs> but it's just taken to a different area. <laughs> well, it's, well, that's the thing is, is it's it's one of those. That was the other thing about the, the both the Steve Holland movies is they didn't pull any punches. It was like it's like sure, like we you you mentioned Dirty Dancing. It's like okay, well that's everybody's fantasy, right? Like. It's every girl's fantasy. She's gonna just show up to summer camp and fall in love with Patrick Swayze. Like that's that's probably not gonna happen, right? But in in this eighties movie that that kind of almost parodies a movie like Sixteen Candles, all like not not perfectly, but you know yep. you can kind of see in that same sort of mm-hmm. like you know dopey friends, trophy girlfriends sort of way where yep. it's like a where. But then the, the, the exchange student across the street, you know, she's accessible, she's pretty, but she doesn't speak English, so why even bother? Right. You know what I mean? It's like, there is that, 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 that fantasy element that's there, but it's rooted in reality. Sure. And then and then you've got uh, Curtis Armstrong um, <laughs> snorting snow and jello <laughs> and just <laughs> a- adding adding the weirdest sort of sight gags to everything that, like, right. You, 
every scene he's in, he just chews the scenery. He, you're just yeah. like, what is wrong with this guy? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> he's got the long coat and the top hat, and he's just like, I can't get real drugs out here. I got to. I mean, and, and he's he's. I mean, that's that's what makes these again. You, you're nailing it because think of John Cusack, where they came from. They came from those John Hughes films, Sixteen Candles, all this. So he, you know, it's like you took the formula for the Hughes films, 16 Candles and all those, and just gave it to a lunatic. <laughs> and <laughs> say, hey, make your own version of one of these teen movies. And that's kind of what we got. And, again, you know, yeah. I mean, it's Curtis Armstrong being booger to the nth degree <laughs> here, you know, and just doing something different with it. And come on, man. You know, of course, Dan Franklin, this is where Danny from Hell Ming, I mean, this he fell, he's just... <laughs> fell absolutely in love with her. We met her at Texas one year, and he was as first time I've seen him starstruck. He literally locked. Jeez. He locked up. I mean, it was like wow. <laughs> and uh, yeah, super nice. Uh, the girl next door kind of thing, right? And uh, mm -hmm. so it, it's it's always that story too. It, the, she's right under your nose, and you never even know it the whole time. But come on, man, you got to hand it to the craziness of John Cusack's his mom <laughs> cook mm -hmm. cooking all the oh. weird stuff uh the the, the the dad who actually is the straight man yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like it's it's like like and and you would never think of it because if you're watching a teenage comedy you're, you're not you're, you're like oh like he's he's just this kind of overly optimistic overly kind of dad sort of dad but then whenever as a dad you listen to him talk you're like, he's a real dad yeah He's like, yeah. hey, you need to get over this girl, get yourself a job, get yourself yeah. straight, like get get outside and like wake up and mow the yard. Like, there's there's things that need to happen in life, and you just have to deal with it. And and as a kid, you're like, go away, dad. You know, I got I got things to think about. And real off, you're like, well, who's gonna mow the lawn? Because if you're not doing it, then I'm doing it, and I'm I don't want to mow the lawn. <laughs> and the fact that they made him so obsessed with Amanda Wiss or Weiss, however you want to say it, the girl from mm -hmm. Nightmare on M Street. You know, even his hangers in his closet with all of her, all of his shirts had her head on it. I mean, <laughs> he's just you know. That that's another thing is all this all the random sight gags. Yeah. The 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 random sight gags where it's it, it, like you've got a moment of 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 I don't know I was like there's nothing in uh uh either one of these movies that's that's so serious that it actually makes you stop and think, except for. There's a side of a moment where it's almost as if it might turn into a very special episode, and then it flips back with the <laughs> sight gag and puts you right. into another scene. You know, it's like you have your moments where you're like, okay, I really feel for this guy, and he's really hurting, but oh my god, yeah, right. right. <laughs> but and, and, uh, and, I mean, and just the randomness of, I mean, think about the Japanese exchange students that talks like Howard Cosell that want to drag race mm -hmm. all the time. I mean. And that leads into him hitting, a, you know, Porky's, the guy from Porky's, and running into his truck. I mean, it's just like, it's so random. The crazy mom that's got uh, <laughs> Diane Franklin living there and, and Ricky, the son. Dude. I mean, <laughs> it, it's, it's so bizarre and wonderful all at the same time. And and Ricky doesn't does not hardly talk at all. That's what's <laughs> like his mom talks for him until she gets blown up. <laughs> <laughs> Her face gets blown up. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh. it, like when she's squeezing yeah. uh, Monique's face is like <laughs> And and Ricky's just sitting there being very quiet and just you know, he's got his little glasses on and, and stuff and then so, so you almost feel a little bit sorry for Ricky until his mom gets blown up, and he turns into a jerk too. And you're like, ah. Oh. But but man, can <laughs> that boy to, dance? <laughs> he needs to be defeated, you know. <laughs> uh, and and then you get John Cusack's little brother that's sending in all the coupons say, from the back of the cereal boxes. <laughs> dude, the the uh, the how to pick up trashy women, right? Like. He, and, and I, I never realized, it was, like, he doesn't have any lines. And that was another thing from mm -hmm. the 80s movies is because, like, you had these teenagers going through crisis and they'd have a heart-to-heart -heart with their mom or their dad or their little brother or sister. And the, the younger sibling always had this some sort of nugget of wisdom or something. Yeah. The, the brother doesn't say anything. Mm -hmm. He's just 
he's just building worlds in his yep. in his own room and he's building rockets and, and bombs that darn and ray gun that he tra- builds he's like what are you doing with all this crap he shoots that thing across the room and it blows up <laughs> never says a word you know <laughs> like, like and when he pops pops his uh because his, his name's lane john cusack's name's lane i want to say lloyd because of lloyd dobler so uh. i don't say anything but it's it's lane uh lane meyer he opens his brother's door and he like steps in because he really needs to talk to somebody and he's got like four or five hookers like and he's got his little how to pick up trashy women and he just like look for a second and just shuts the, the door, door while he's just, <laughs> it was i mean i remember the, uh not too long ago wow well, just probably five or ten years ago actually but when um those kind of print on demand websites started popping up and you could you could put your own designs or you could order existing designs and that was one of them you could order like a journal with a cover that said how to pick up trashy women (laughs) (laughs) but it was like 20 bucks because it was kind of a new technology the print on demand (laughs) like how cool would that be that's (laughs) classic but yeah i mean the things that everybody knows from this movie i mean you can go on and on about things that happen in a movie, which is, is great. But the things people always talk about is I want my $2. Oh yeah. The bicycle kid, oh. the, the paper boy <laughs> that comes by and breaks out every window in, in the, the garage door, you know, oh, yeah. and the, the switch blade comb when he pulls it out <laughs> and the, you know, persistently chases John Cusack through the whole movie, wanting his $2 for the paper. And then the other is, come on, man, the cheeseburger singing Van Halen. That, that was that was one of those scenes that I I completely blanked on. I forgot about it. I'm sitting watching it, being like, okay, like I realized in the in the eighties, like Van Halen was like at oh, yeah. the top yeah. of the game right then. Yeah, and that song was a big hit for them. Yep, and they licensed it to a hamburger <laughs> <laughs> claymation scene. I'm sure they made bank. I'm oh, sure yeah. Van Halen made more money off that movie than yeah. anybody else did. But to watch, I was like, "Oh wow, that's that's really Van Halen. That wasn't some Van right. Halen sound alike." Right. Um, that was oh wow, that was. <laughs> and cool. and that's something that Steve Holland did too, because both of his movies were very in touch with the MTV generation. Because mm-hmm. not only did you have that. You know, the Van Halen song, the video influence of what's going on there. But even the songs that are in uh, One Crazy Summer were legit rock bands of mm-hmm. the time. You know, Honeymoon Suite had the big song at the end, which is one of my favorite songs ever. And, uh, <laughs> if I could grow wings, I would do anything just to keep you with me. Great song. Uh, yeah. Great song. But you know he was he was very on point with all that stuff, and maybe that's why it stands out so much because it was like this guy gets us at that time, you know. That 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 I guess it's that difference between being childish and being childlike. Yeah, it's like oh, like there, there there's a maturity thing where you're like okay, well, well. I'm just stupid and playing with blocks. And then there's the other thing where you're like stepping aside and being like, okay, I understand why and how playing with blocks is fun. Yeah. So I'm going to sit down with the kids and kind of enhance the, the, the playing with block experience because, um, I, 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 that, that's one of the things because there were so many things that were so in, in both movies that that were so, I don't know. Just when you when you mentioned the 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 the, the MTV generation, it's yep. like oh, being in touch. There were so many things that were just so like the scenery was so visceral. Like boom, that scene punched it. Yeah. And we were watching uh, the Big Lebowski a couple weeks ago mm. and Raising Arizona. And one thing <laughs> that the Coen Brothers do this so well is they've got like a two and a half hour long movie. But yeah. they, but the movie is built up of individual scenes, yep. and each scene plays out like its own story. So you don't have to watch the whole movie; you can just watch this yep. one scene, laugh, be entertained, and they have the transition to the next scene, and the whole thing makes a composition. But it, it, you can, 
you can enjoy little bits and pieces of it. And the Steve Holland movies were like that, yeah. where it's like the little sight gags, the little scene, every scene plays out and every scene's a classic. And then even the transitional scenes have the sight gags with the mom and the weird meatloaf and the dad's looking at it like, <laughs> you know, like how many of you like ever had a mom cook dinner and dad, ca- dad didn't even like it. That was one of those things like growing up, like I pretty much ate everything. I, I was never a really picky or finicky eater, but there was a few things that I didn't like. And if it was weird because if my mom didn't like it, I didn't have to eat it. If my dad didn't like it, I didn't have to eat it. But if they <laughs> both liked it and I didn't, I had to eat it. Yeah. It yeah. was like, it's like, I didn't like pinto beans. It's like, they both liked it. They're like, you have to eat that. I'm like, oh, but my dad didn't like squash. He's like, yeah, you don't have to eat that, son. You just <laughs> scoop that right off your plate. <laughs> like, it was I'm like, okay, well. You know, hopefully I'm winning the food lottery whenever it shows but up. But yeah, that weird Jello mold that she made with the raisins <laughs> in it, as she slaps on the table and it starts crawling away. You know, uh-huh. it's just, all those gags. It, it still works. I mean, it's 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 just this side of slapstick. You know, you mm-hmm. you know where it's going when you're watching it, and it's still all right. You know, and that's the funny thing about it is you've seen all these gags before. Even mm-hmm. even after you've seen them repeated even after, but for some reason they just work here, uh, it, it, because you're in this Steve Holland world. I mean, it just it, everything is okay. Yeah, it's just the way things are here. Well, in in rewatching it, there's some things that I noticed that I kind of kind of missed. either blanked or there's just the way it kind of put it in in. Uh, it was that I always thought that Lane like failed like he didn't Mm. qualify he was no he qualified the dude just uh like the the new boyfriend yeah just kind of booted him so like there there were there were certainly some stakes against him and when we're like okay we're gonna just we're gonna ski the k-12 or whatever and he's like he's like that's a killer mountain the other guy could ski it well in reality he could too he just yeah he's lane was at least as good as him it wasn't that montage of like like Rocky where right. it's like Rocky was not as good as Ivan Drago. Right. He was not. Right. It took it took a lot of training for him to and and him killing his buddy <laughs> to really deep dig deep and find that heart and soul yeah. and the muscle to to take down Ivan. But I, but Ivan was rough. Oh yeah. <laughs> Ivan was a killer. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean Ivan didn't care. Yeah. Lane was at least as good as uh, <laughs> ski patrol guy, sure. like like ski instructor guy. Yeah, he just needed to get his confidence up, and right. so like whenever you're watching him like beat his ass on one ski, yeah. Um, I noticed watching this again. I'm like, of course, like well, if he was on two skis, this would be like a super easy. Yeah, he's just scared because he's running from. Uh, the bicycle kid wanted two dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he's willing to kill himself skiing, skiing down the killer mountain <laughs> that, to get away from the two dollar guy. <laughs> that was the main motivation was just to stay away from him. So yeah, I mean, uh, again, what it does in this crazy, whacked out Steve Holland world, he makes it possible. You know, like the Rocky thing is so you know, Karate Kid. We talked about that too. You know. The odds are so against you. Whereas this, there's a possibility there, right? It's kind of like mm-hmm. it's kind of like you going against the biggest jock in school in a game of dodgeball, right? And there's a point where you might actually could even beat this guy, right? It, it's it's you know, it's a different situation. But I was I was in a situation like that. This guy was supposed to be. I mean, he was it. Everybody was always scared of him in dodgeball, and I beat him once. You know, <laughs> nice. and you know, it's that, that kind of thing. Hey, this is, this is kind of possible, you know? So yeah, I mean, it, I mean, th- this really, as bizarre as the world is, it still hits home with, you know, you got to believe in yourself and, and you can do anything you apply yourself to. And that's, it's strange. You come away with a message like that, right? Cause both movies are that. Well, it, it is, but it's also, uh, Monique helps him fix the Camaro. Oh yeah, yeah. And it, it, that's that's one of those things. That is another one of those things that you miss. Like you remember watching mm-hmm. it as a kid, and then later, 
it's like he's like, oh yeah, I got a Camaro. It doesn't run, and it's under the the sheet. And his dad's telling me to get it off the lawn. But I don't care how good she was at at mechanically. That thing came out looking cherry. Yeah. I mean, it is brand new. <laughs> it is like the bodywork on it. Like I had, growing up, the the guy, the lady next door. So, um, my grandparents bought bought their house on the street that I a long way around. My grandparents bought a house out in the country. That is no longer in the country. Yeah. Now we are on the inside or just right outside the loop before they built the other loop like 10 miles out and outside of that 10 miles is the country so we're like 30 miles in from the country yeah but back then it was the country sure so they bought their house it it was built the neighbor next door had their house and so my grandparents lived in it until they died and then we moved in the neighbor who's I think he was like 25 years younger than my uh, than my dad had a old Mustang, mm. and he was always working on it. <laughs> per- like always, we'd go to visit Grandma. Brian's working on his Mustang. <laughs> like Grandma died, we move into the house. Brian's working on his Mustang. This dude just living with his mom, working on his Mustang. Like, yeah. and he he like roll it out, he push it out of the garage, get it started. It would. <laughs> I mean, turn it off, roll it back in, and put a tarp over it, and he's working on his Mustang. And, I mean, that was 25 years of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I ever saw that car move more than 10 feet backwards and 10 feet front, frontwards and get a tarp on it. The body didn't look so hot. Yeah. <laughs> it was just kind of like rusty white. Like it maybe had been a, a white color, and then it rusted up. <laughs> I don't uh, it was, Dude, when Monique fixes that cor- that Camaro, <laughs> that thing comes out <laughs> like the body on it is just cherry. Sure. And he goes and raises the uh, the, the the Howard Cosell guys right. and leave them in the dust. It's so great <laughs> that that montage of them fixing that car. Sure. Over the course of like two days. Yeah. Like, and one one thing I know about fixing a car because I had a 1950 model Chevrolet when I was in high school and mm. I couldn't fix it because you know what. A wheel, not a wheel with a tire on it, but a wheel costs a hundred bucks. Sure, in in 1992. Yeah, just trying to find parts for it. Find parts for it was pain, but once you found them, yeah. they were expensive. Sure, <laughs> you like I needed a brake job. You can't just go just buy parts <laughs> yeah. and just pop them in there, like unless you've got some money coming in. But man, that was that montage. Yeah. That's that Rocky montage where it's like, okay, I'm not strong enough to beat Ivan, but I've got 90 days. Now I'm strong. <laughs> I beat him. Well, I mean, look, look montage... one crazy summer. I mean, we build a a crappy boat, but we put the rear end of a Ferrari in it, right? And we're good to go. <laughs> so, such a perfect scene. Such a perfect scene. I, um, <laughs> I think that's a good time to take a break. We need to hear from one of our sponsors, and we will be right back. Come running in from the lobby, thinking that they missed something. Ha! I'm Edge Stewart, movie star, also known as Bobcat Goldthwait, and me and my friends John Cusack and Demi Moore. I hate boats. I'm not getting on any boat. I beg to differ. Just had one crazy summer. Your dad said you were collecting shells. Shells! 57 millimeter. We did all the normal things people do. Hey, little boy, will you hold on to this for me? Nay, friends. Sorry. Oh, no. Saw the sights. Please, your enormous is anything but chilly. Killed our own food. Dazzled women. Are you ready for me, Hoops? We were party animals. Help me. Everyone loved us. My car. And we loved every minute. God. By the end of the summer... I felt that grown a lot personally. I felt a little bit better about who I was and where I was going. Okay, let's move it out. Here we go. Ah, Wait. It really was one crazy summer. Ah. All right, we're 
we're back. I didn't want to say too much because there's so much awesomeness with one crazy summer of just scene after scene with Bobcat Goldthwait. Oh man. And, and 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 just like dude, I've got a whole big ass page of notes. Just like <laughs> just like don't forget to mention this. This is just the coolest thing in the world. Cuz again, watching him night after night, it yeah. was like okay, he he had his chance. He he had his shot with uh, uh, Better Off Dead. Right. And he shot, and it bounced, and it bounced, and bounced, and maybe it went in, maybe it went out. Maybe that was the theme behind One Crazy Summer. One Crazy Summer was just amped up to 11. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's like, it's like okay, this is a Hail, Hail Mary pass. I'm going to just th- yep. get the opening scene <laughs> where the – the cat messes up his drawing, and he sends the cat to bed, and the cat's got the uh, the the trophies on the outside of his kennel of all the squirrels and rats and birds and stuff that he's killed. It's just a it's just yeah. a never ending sight gag. Yeah, and you know, coming into this one, it's like okay, some somebody either got more money, or he's just using the last bit of whatever he has to yeah. to just really go all out because that's what one crazy summer is this is just bizarre yeah. it's such a strange movie but it's so good <laughs> yeah uh, well and i actually like i said we, we went and seen this one when it came out and i actually saw this one first and went back and found better off dead later on so my heart is always going to be more for one crazy summer Oh, dude. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it just, you know, there's a lot of people that's right opposite. They like Better Off Dead, and I get it. I mean, it's great. I still love watching it, but let's just say it this way. I went to see this movie, not because of John Cusack. <laughs> I went to see it because Bobcat Goathwaite's in it uh-huh. and Booger's in it. Yep. That was enough for me. I was sold because those guys, I mean, Police Academy 2, changed the way that I talked <laughs> through the rest of my high school years because I was a bobcat freak. <laughs> Dude, that, I said I mentioned I mentioned earlier that my dad was like, I don't understand how this got greenlit when because that was another thing. Like he he would say things and I don't know if it was like semi serious or if he was serious or whatever, but like Bobcat would say or do something, he'd be laughing and be like, I don't understand how this guy has a job <laughs> because he's just so weird. Like, like who watched this guy like on stage, like hawking up loogies and like screaming and kind of having Tourette's and just being like, let's, let's put this guy in, in film. Yeah. You know, you see the guys in the in the in the fedora hats and the and it's like, let's <laughs> you're gonna go, you're gonna go places, guy. You got Bobcat with his scraggly long hair and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> but but I, dude, Bobcat just kind of came on the scene, yeah, and just exploded. There was a world before Bobcat, and then there was the world during Bobcat, and then he went behind the camera. He did a lot yeah. of writing and stuff, but like. He just stopped being in movies, but the ones he was in were so – you can't not watch him yeah. because he's just so – he's so hilarious. And uh... my, my daughter fell in love with the Hot to Trot, <laughs> <laughs> where it's him and the horse, right? And the horse is John Candy. <laughs> I mean, it's just like – you know, she was like, this movie is terrible, but I love it. <laughs> that just, that's, that's one of those that's just <laughs> – he he's one of those people that just it makes no sense, yeah. but it makes sense because he's so funny. Yeah, and uh, that that's one of those things that I, that's like a advice thing that Steve Martin does. Because I don't know if you've watched old Steve Martin. Oh yeah, he's got the the arrow in his head. Oh yeah, the banjo. The real Steve Martin. And the, yeah, the original, like the old yeah seventies Steve Martin. Yeah, and. and it's it's kind of a weird thing to say, but I mean, comparing him to Bobcat is the same thing because Bobcat's just the Steve Martin's like, just be good, so good that they can't ignore you. Yeah, and he just comes out and he's so bizarre yeah. that you can't stop looking at him. Yeah. It's just like, what is this guy gonna do? Well, it's that's the thing and, you're afraid you're gonna miss something because everything's been so sporadic, and mm-hmm. and and that's exactly what the draw is with with Bobcat Goldthwait. 
Uh, yeah, you don't know what his what his expression, his next expression is going to be. If it's going to be a yell or a laugh or a unintelligible words or you know, I mean, like when he That's... he goes into the whole speech of, Who's, let, me, let me tell you a little story about a little boy that got beat up when he was a kid and all that stuff, and he's like, oh, were you that kid? No, I used to beat that kid up. It's like, why are you so fat? Why are you so fat? You know. The, and the, the, the funniest thing is because uh, you mentioned that scene and I posted it on our, on our Facebook. The, the the thing that like knocks it in was whenever he tells the story and acts just like completely <laughs> taken aback by the. He's like, and then Clay's like, "Isn't that a great story? Like he's heard it before. He's heard this story so many times. He's yeah. like, Dude, that's an awesome story. Like yeah, the, Sto- he's, the he's... Stork brothers, man, they're fantastic. <laughs> but come on, man, all bets are off. I mean, the the, the greatest scene ever is Bob Co- Go <laughs> Bobcat Goathwaite dressed up like Godzilla, <laughs> stomping, uh-huh. stomping on that miniature city." In front of that Japanese guy, and he's going, "Oh, very good party," you know. He's just like he's all he's all excited. And um, the dude from Christmas Vacation flip, fixes flips his cigar in his mouth, so there's smoke coming out of yep. his mouth. He's, he's uh, before before that even happens, or he's just like he's like, "Oh, welcome to the planet of the toad, big <laughs> <laughs> produce." And like, like, what? <laughs> he's just so weird. But that's the kind of stuff that yeah. I would think of. Like I think of all kinds of bizarre stuff, probably because of Bobcat. You grew up seeing this stuff. Yeah, it, it it warped my mind, and I'm like, huh. Here's this kind of I... <laughs> the uh, probably undersung aspect of the movie was the uh, Boy Scouts. Oh yeah, and the 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 dad yeah. where it's just like boys tourniquet and it's like there's got all these roving boy scouts running around with bandages trying to bandage up people and stuff and he's agak's dad's like where he's he's like uh he's like oh it's bad there's gonna be arms hanging from trees (laughs) eyeballs hanging out you just gotta take a stick and (laughs) try to stick them back in and (laughs) (laughs) and all these kids are just like Uh, he's like Go help. And they're like, all right. right." What's running around with bandages. What's his name? He's from SCTV. Uh, (laughs) Can't even think of his name. But he's great. And, of course, you know, like we said, Ak-Ak. I mean, just, you know, you Mm -hmm. you sympathize for him, too, because it's not who he wants to be, right? He's just trying trying to make his dad happy. The, the 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 whole doll scene. It's like every time there's a, a <laughs> mutilated doll, there's a girl with a broken heart. He's like, "How do you really need to want to join the Marines?" <laughs> and the, the, it's funny because Joel Murray, that's Bill Murray's brother. Yeah, yeah, is 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 George, and he's I mean him and uh, and John Cusack are kind of like the anchors for uh, like like George George. George Calamari is weird, <laughs> but he's not he's not over the top weird. He's kind of just a happy go lucky sort of like he doesn't have any kind of weird ticks or anything about him that just makes him strange like some of the other guys but uh but it's joel murray yeah like that's chester cheetah man yeah <laughs> like, that's exactly a, I, mean, he's a, I mean it because it's just amazing to look through and look at all the murray brothers and everything i mean uh we were talking about moving violations on another show somewhere and i'm like there you go there's <laughs> you another murray brother you know mm-hmm so, yeah, I mean, it, and, and of course, when I think of him, I think about uh, his head getting stuck under the, the, the chair at the beach and the, the can of chili. And <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, there's two there's two scenes where the exact same thing happens. <laughs> and they're they're like, George, and they go running back and there's paramedics. Amb- ambulance shows up. <laughs> the, the, the first time the paramedics are like, oh, my God, because the dude farts on his head. And, like, the paramedics don't want to give him mouth to mouth. Or they're, they're both like, okay, good. And then, like, the second time they're like, I've been through this before. I'm not doing it. And they're both, like, arguing, like, I'm not doing it either. <laughs> but <laughs> the uh, but that was the other thing. But right before George gets his head sat on by the fat guy, um the the guys are sitting on you know hoops and George George sitting under the the lawn chair and uh, the the uh, Akak's there and they're playing frisbee and the and the, yeah. the brothers are there and uh, then Cookie comes up and she's like hey guys you know 
would you like to help me move my boat? <laughs> and <laughs> and Egg's like, no, no, <laughs> that sounds like work. <laughs> <laughs> and you think about that in terms of like you know you you're with your boys and like some girls walk up you're like oh hey baby what's going on and, uh mm. <laughs> sure i'll help you move your boat <laughs> yeah oh man so much fun and it's the same story like you said it's just flipped a little you know you you but it's the exact same formula with john kuzak playing the the underdog trying to like a girl that's out of his league and then you, you <laughs> find out that you probably don't want to be in that league to begin with and uh you find Demi well, Moore. That was one of those <laughs> that was one of those things that I, I found that was kind of well it was almost refreshing but also kind of strange because he did not want to be with Cookie. Right. He got pressured into that date. Right. Like he got he got pushed into it and uh <laughs> by her and his friends and he's like i would rather be with cassandra right. because i'm just that's more my my but also <laughs> you touched my car you way... <laughs> <laughs> if, if you look at the way demi moore's dressed the whole movie you can't tell that she would later become like this huge sex symbol yeah, she's absolutely you know she she's in like uh bohemian garb she's very uh uh, conservative, well, I don't know, say conservatively dressed. She's not, but she's she's certainly not um, dressed down. Right. They're not trying to 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 sex her up. Um, she's trying to be a serious musician. Right. You know. And so yeah, she's not so trying I, to use her assets to to get the crowd. She's trying to use actual talent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And. We, we've got to go to the Beckerstead Estates, though. <laughs> like the, the Teddy and his dad and the old man and the 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 the, the crossbow oh, with the lobsters. Fantastic! Like the, the, the stethoscope, so we could just hear them cry. <laughs> <laughs> like, what kind of sadistic dude are you? Yeah. Man? Perfect <laughs> like, bad guy. I mean, it it plays right into. Just like he was in, like I said, the Twisted Sister videos. He was the wily coyote, basically. He was, you know, you hated him so much, but at the same time, you couldn't help but laugh at him. Uh, just, just perfect. I mean, for this kind of movie, he's the the perfect bad guy. And uh, you know, his, his his rich, spoiled son, you know, uh, driving the Ferrari and and just being an ass. I mean, you know, it's just a uh, it, it's again. It's just that formula of, hey, this is, in a weird way, this is kind of like my life, you know. <laughs> it's, dude, well, dude, like, I mean, I'm not gonna name any names, but I've had friends like Egg Stort, like, yeah, they're just, like, just bizarre. They just say the wrong thing at the wrong time, mm -hmm. or they just have their own way of thinking, and they say. Like, hey, will you help me out? And they're like, no, I don't want to do that. And you're like, you're standing there looking at the girl and like looking at your friend, being like, what the, like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> like that sort of thing. Like not literally, but you know, just like in that same sort of a uh, situation. We're like, yeah. <laughs> you, you don't want to help her. Uh... It was <laughs> like, no, I'm good. It was the kids when you were in PE, the ones that were sitting over there, sitting down eating their sandwich. You know, <laughs> instead <laughs> right. of being involved. You know. <laughs> that looks like too. That's gonna to be too much of a strain. I think I'll just sit here and eat this sandwich and some chips. Yeah. Well, even George is like, "What are you doing? You're you're like, you're you're ditching me for like eight chicks, and of course <laughs> you're gonna ditch her for eight chicks. <laughs> <laughs> you're sitting under a lawn chair. Yeah. Like, you're buried in the sand. Oh yeah. uh, man, but the the fix the boat montage. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, and or, uh, ag resort. The crazy uncle, man. The crazy uncle that's that's do it, trying to win the thing on the phone the whole time. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Dude, his hands are just covered in nicotine stains. He's just sitting there with a cigarette in his mouth. Hey, uncle. Well, I can't remember what he called Hey, uncle, whatever. And he's like, what are you doing in here? Yeah. <laughs> Did you see Get I'm out busy? here. Can't you see I'm trying to work? <laughs> can't, I'm trying to leave, be, leave me alone with my dream. <laughs> Puts puts the radio in the bathtub and blows himself out the window. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that's fantastic. Rich Hall. That's Rich Hall and the radio station at the end. Yeah, um, like there's like the the Bosco, the dog, and the little yeah. girls with the the, the, the nose face, yeah. just like <laughs> slapping people on their back. Yeah, 
Yeah, I told my little, my, my daughter was doing that face thing. I was like, that's going to stick that way. She's like, really? <laughs> yeah, like, watch. Nah, I'll show no, you. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and it, don't forget you had John Matuzak at the beginning, you know, on the mm-hmm. motorcycle. As the biker guy. And his hair stabs what? through the fish when he lands in the water. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't figure out how that exactly helped her. She's like, I'm trying to hide the money in the thing. And John, John, John Cusack's like throws the money at the bikers and like runs away. It's like, that doesn't, that, that doesn't make any sense, but yeah. I, that's the eighties. I mean, there's a lot of not making sense in this. Uh... <laughs> Fantastic. Oh man. Well, Hey man. I don't want to give the whole movie away or both whole movies away. Right. What are, What are your final thoughts on either one of these, other than watch them? Yeah, the, these are uh, chicken soup for the soul. If If I'm yeah, very if, much so. If I'm down in the dumps and and I want something, there's never a time that these would come on and I would not sit down and not finish watching what's ever left of it. Or, um, yeah, these are just it's comfort food, man. I, I love these movies. Always have. Always will. They, they they just feel like they're a part of you. I I totally agree. Um, again, watching them is like hanging out with an old friend. Yeah, just you catching up. You're like, oh man, you haven't changed a bit. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, you still look the same as you did 25 years ago. It's so great. But yeah, yeah man, I'm 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 really excited about getting into some of these old movies. Yep. Um. Talk, you know, Scott and I did American Werewolf in London oh, on, our, on our most yeah. recent episode. Uh, yeah. That was one that I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot recently, but just sitting there watching it again and kind of taking some details and being like, oh, my God, I can't believe they did that. Right. Um, but, um, but yeah, man, that has been a really good conversation about Savage Steve Holland movies, and I didn't mess it up at the end like I did at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we love you guys. Hit up the Facebook, the Instagram. It's all You Know What's Awesome. We're on You Know What's Awesome Radio. It's a Legion station these days. That's right. And uh, we're going to put this one to bed so we can start up a new one. We'll, we'll talk to you later on. Well, I was going to say, we might want to mention. So if you guys noticed, we had our, our MTV episode, and there was a, a, a challenge for you out there, a contest. And uh, we've actually got a winner, and that's Angie Young, which I know Angie. She comes to all the shows that my band plays at. So uh, what she had to do, what what the contest was, was uh, a video of yourself pantomiming to like one of your favorite 80s songs that was from the MTV times. And lo and behold, she did it. She was jamming to a little uh, Joan Jett. And uh, <laughs> Billy and I have come together, and, and uh, we've got some uh, special gifts that, that uh, she's going to get have to figure out how to get them to her, but we'll, we'll figure that out. But we just want to say thanks to her for participating and uh, for all of you out there. That's kind of why we do this. We don't want it to just be the, the, the Billy and Rick show. We want you guys to be as much a part of it. Just like you guys are on the Facebook page, man, we're having a lot of fun on there. So we do appreciate mm-hmm. everybody being involved there. But uh, just kind of want to give Angie a, a shout out and uh, she'll be uh, getting some gifts pretty soon. That is awesome. The, uh, the, the, the the Facebook group and everybody's interaction and telling stories, that is so much fun because, I, like I, I told a buddy of mine, when, when, when people were like, oh, who's your favorite singer? And they're like, oh, well, you know, the guy from Queensryche, but I sh- you wouldn't even mention them. <laughs> I was like, dude, I'm, I'm only a really good looking, charismatic <laughs> radio host. I can't, I can't think of everything. So if you think that it should be on the page, yeah. By all means, share it. it because yeah, um, what what I think is awesome, what you think is awesome, might not might might not necessarily be the same thing, but that doesn't matter because we're building a community. Right, we're talk, we're having a show. If, hey, man, if you've got a subject that you want us to talk about, if you like never ending story, hey, man, throw it up there. We'll we'll watch it and talk about it because right. that's what we do. You you like Cheech so. and Chong movies? Put them out there. <laughs> Early Pee Wee Herman, man. Oh yeah, do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, the the first appearance of Pee Wee yeah. Herman is in Cheech and Chong. Absolutely. So. Well, cool, man. Well, let's lock this one down so All we right. can go into the next one. We'll see you next time, guys. See you, folks. Mm-hmm.